So it's like a famous number. When famous, when scientists have famous numbers, they get like their own letter, and this gets its own letter. Mm. C for the speed of light. Don't get that confused though, like with C for specific heat. Same thing. Or like centi. Or centi. But this is just so. If you see this equation, most likely it means like in this famous equation, E equals m c squared. That's the speed of light. And you square that makes it. By the way, this is a huge number, guys. 3.0 times in the eighth meters per second. Way big number. Yeah. Ginormous. Oh my gosh. Ginormous. Yeah. Now what you can do is we didn't talk about frequency, did we? What's the frequency, Mr. Sams? Uh, we haven't talked about frequency that. Frequency is how fast the wave is moving past a particular point. And the units that are on that are called the waves per second. Right. So if you're standing, so to speak, by wave, and you count how many waves go by you per second, yep. that's called the frequency. Yeah. It's also called, the abbreviation, a hertz. hertz. Yeah. Now, where have you heard hertz before? When someone gives you a hertz donut. You ever had a hertz donut? No. Hurts, donut. Ouch! Ah, ha, ha. Uh, that hurt. <laughs> donut. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think a hurts cars or something like that. Oh, okay. No, a hurts. <laughs> well, uh, hurts is the abbreviation for, and you've heard like gigahertz for your like a uh, radio station. You know, it's a so good megahertz. That's measuring how yep. many waves per second. Because interestingly enough, radio waves. Are like light, and so sound travels on the radio waves, your TV waves, or heck, on my cell phone, it works that way. So it's pretty cool on waves. So, uh, and the symbol for actually, we should talk about what what is and the symbol for frequency is a is a funny V. It's a new. It's actually the Greek letter new. So it's not the straight armed V like velocity. It's the squiggly V new. Yeah, it's easy to get these mixed up. V versus nu. Be careful. Be careful. So here's the equation. If you take the wavelength and you multiply it by the frequency, it equals the speed of light. There it is. And the speed of light is constant. It doesn't change. And so yeah. if you make one go up, the other one goes down. Yep. Yeah. Now, this is what's called the electromagnetic spectrum. Magnetic spectrum. Yeah. Notice that the visible spectrum is a very, very, very narrow band in the full spectrum. It's only a small region. Now, think about it. Our eyes are only sensitive to that very small range. And that's probably a good thing because um, if they weren't, um, with the amount of radio waves and television waves and microwaves and stuff coming, you know, cosmic waves coming from outer space, there'd be a lot of, if you will, light noise uh, coming into our eyeballs. So it's probably good that we can only detect a small amount. Yeah, it's kind of odd that, that human beings can only detect such a very small band of light. But really there is much more, if you will, yeah. light we don't use that term scientifically, then um, exists. And there are right here gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet. Yep. That stuff will give you sunburns. And some insects infrared. can actually detect ultraviolet. And yes. some other animals like a snake can detect ultraviolet. Uh, so if infrared. you were an insect and you could see in the ultraviolet spectrum, what color would you see? Um, I, super purple? I don't know. That's the interesting <laughs> question. Is It's like a, another color that we, that we have no comprehension have, yeah, exactly. of. We've it's never like perceived. talking to someone who's colorblind and trying to explain like red to them or talking to somebody who's blind and trying to explain color to them. Right. It's just they can't understand. Exactly. It. And so um, um, so there's lots more light, if you will, quote unquote, than you can see. Another thing that's important to understand about this is it says increasing frequency. Now, I'll bet you could figure this out, but what happens energetically as you go in this graph from the right to the left? Uh, energy. Going Which would you rather have hit you? A, a radio wave, oh, yeah. an AM, an ultraviolet. Um, I'm going to want the radio wave to hit me. Why is that? Because it has way lower energy than, say, like a gamma ray. So these have high energy up here. Yep. So I want you to write that high energy on this side, and this side right here is low energy. Yeah. This is why, folks. You probably all have had an X-ray. And of course, when you have an X-ray, take pictures of your bones or whatever yeah. inside they your body. They cover you in lead because they don't want you to be overexposed. Exactly. They to only want just the area. Why would they? What, what would happen if you were overexposed to X-rays? Well, it can damage your DNA, and, and things can start to mutate. You could get cancer as a result, mm -hmm. or pass mutated, Hulk. or turn into the Incredible Hulk if you get zapped with Super gamma powers. rays. Actually, that's not true. It just would cause uh, deformations and it could kill you. Actually, Says you. Yeah, actually. I can get superpowers. You can get superpowers? <laughs> you had them. Exactly. Actually, let me tell you a story, a little more serious story. I, I found this out talking to my mother. My grandfather was a medical doctor back in, he got his medical license in 1918, 1920, something like that. So a long, long time ago. And um, uh, they invented this thing called a fluoroscope. You know what a fluoroscope is, Mr. Sam? No, actually, I don't think Basically, I it's an x-ray machine where they could take, like, real lifetime 
uh, images of the person. Oh, wow. And so what, they, what, what, my, uh, my, what my grandfather would do is that, he, it, let's say Mr. Sam's had broken his arm. Okay. And so he comes to In me. In a lightsaber fight. Okay. All right. So, and they would take this tabletop x-ray machine and he would set your bones um, with by looking down. Oh, wow. That. This is before, of course, they knew things about x-ray machines. Uh. So actually it was a bad thing. My grandfather got, uh, he got uh, lung cancer. He'd never smoked in his life. And um, actually they, he, he went to his doctor as a doctor and they said, Dr. Casebolt, we're going to have to cut um, your hands off. And wow. he said, uh, I'm a surgeon. You are not cutting my hands off. <laughs> so he died of uh, lung cancer with ever, never smoking a cigarette in his life. Wow. So, yeah, kind of a sad story, but uh, yeah. nobody knew back then. So uh, x-rays for lots of time, not good. Anyways, interesting story. Wow. Yeah. Very. Okay. Now, let's talk about light some more. Okay, let me turn the color change here. All right. How does matter behave? It acts like a? Uh, particle. Particle. Hey. Mm. Did I not change the color? I don't know. I see white color. I went white. A particle. What does that mean? Uh, like a, a, a point in space. Like a tiny, tiny little ball. Yeah. Um, um, particle. So matter. So we're talking about matter now, not light. And we'll connect these in just a minute. All right. So light is a particle. So if I throw a, a, a ball, let's say I'm playing pool or something like that, and it were to hit the table, this is a pool uh, ball mm -hmm. or a billiards ball or what do you call it? Yep. And it would come off. It turns out exactly the same angle. So whatever this angle is, this would come out at that same angle. So that's how light. That, I mean, that's how matter works. Okay. But then this guy named Max Planck shows up, and you can see when he was alive, and he began to look at matter, mm -hmm. and he said the amount of energy is actually here's a fancy word, quantized. T i z e. Quantized. Dies. Quantized dyes. Yeah, quantized. It is quantized. Yeah. What, what does that mean? Um, that means that energy can only be in specific amounts. It's not like a, a, a continuous range that it can be in. It can only occur in a specific quantity, and we call those small quantities called a quanta, or quantum if you have one. Quanta is plural. So they come in these tiny little packets of energy, and you'll see how this works. This is really kind of a confusing thing to understand. Yeah. All right, so now let's go back to light. Let's talk okay. about light for a minute. So matter light behaves like a particle, and then so he said light, light travels as a wave, wave, but also as a, as a particle. We this call is, that wave-particle duality. Yeah. Yep. I didn't write that down. Yeah. Uh, ah! It is the wave-particle duality. Yes. So is light a wave? Or a particle? Yes. Wait a second. Is light a wave or a particle? Uh-huh. Who's on first? Yep. <laughs> okay. Third base. Okay. Um, <laughs> a particle of light then is called a? A photon. A photon. All right. Now we're entering into Star Trek land here, folks. So, folks, a particle of light is called a photon. So light actually is a particle, but it also travels as a wave. And we'll illustrate that with a picture in just a minute. Now, does light have mass? Mm, no. There's actually a, a, an interesting quote in one of our textbooks. It says light does have a teeny, teeny, tiny, and makes, makes actually our, remember how, you know, like uh, the paper clip to the earth? Yeah. Makes that look heavy. Hmm. Thing. Yeah. So, um, so maybe so. Yeah. Um, okay. So you can kind of see this. So here's a picture, a good picture, that light is both a wave and a particle. So it's, it, now, it's not, I think the way that's helped me to understand of this, I, I like to think of, of the particle moving along the wave, but that's really not very right. accurate. It's not perfectly true. The reality, it, it is the wave, and it, and is, it is the, the particle. particle. Right. And that is just kind of conceptually yeah. hard to get your brains you, around. you have to think of light as kind of existing in the fourth dimension, if you will, yeah. and, but we exist in three, and so we can't quite wrap our heads around it. It's just, okay, here you go. Picture a four-dimensional cube. Okay, hold on. Let me let me get a, let me let me draw a cube. All right. All right. I got a cube. Right. I now, can draw a picture right. of a cube. Now what you just drew is a three-dimensional representation. Got length, got width, and it's got height. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm sorry. That's a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object, which you just drew right there. All right. Because yeah, they're looking right. at two dimensions. So now, if you can think of, you know, right now, if I lived in two dimensions and someone said cube, I would have to go, huh? Well, I know it has some. It's kind of like a square, but it's kind of like a bunch of squares together. But if I live on two dimensions, I can't actually visualize that because I've never seen anything like that. So when I say it's 
that light has properties of a wave and it has properties of a particle, mm. but it is both at the same time, you can't really get your head around that because you don't really experience that in your three-dimensional world. So it is kind of hard to understand that the world is bigger, yeah, more dimensional than we think. Yes. Yeah, this is kind of particle physics stuff. It gets yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah, good times. All right, and actually this is a pretty cool picture here that just, like is this that? is the photon traveling on a wave. Oh. I got it on the internet. It's pretty cool. Okay, and I thought this was pretty cool. <laughs> This is Erwin Schrodinger. We'll talk oh. about him later. <laughs> and, of course, the particle says to the wave, no one told me that I was going to have to work with her. Da-dum-psh. Da-dum-boom. Okay.